Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 12th, 528 a.m. Central Time. Grain markets are higher this morning. March corn futures up one and three quarters at 483 and a quarter. March soybeans up two at 1355 and a quarter. March Chicago wheat up three and a half at 613. March Kansas City wheat up four at 636 and a quarter. March spring wheat up two and a half at 714 and a quarter. Got some fertilizer news from uh, some of our government officials. So we have some U.S. senators calling for oversight of fertilizer companies. Republican Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa and Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin are slated to introduce legislation to increase the transparency of fertilizer companies. The bill directs the USDA to investigate pricing transparency, imports, emerging technologies, and other issues. It also calls for an examination of concentration within the industry and possible anti-competitive behaviors. Senator Grassley is aiming for the legislation to fit into next year's five-year farm bill reauthorization. This is going to be called the Fertilizer Research Act of 2023. Grassley's office says it's backed by Iowa corn and soybean farmers. I'm assuming some of the associations like Iowa corn growers or somebody is involved in this. I couldn't find a copy of, of the bill or what they're proposing. Um, in any case, I feel like this is a 2022 issue um, that they're trying to resolve now. Uh, I, I like it though. I mean, I, I feel as if, yeah, fertilizer prices and, and the way the markets function are, are they lack transparency for sure. It's, it's very hard to find good information on why the markets are doing what they're doing. And since it's like kind of a, a retail product at the end of the day to you guys, um, the, the pricing is definitely questionable, but I feel like peak um, uncertainty when it comes to fertilizer pricing and like the big volatility, even at the retail level, all that stuff peaked following the Russia Ukraine deal, like uh, mid 2022 into the early part of this year. And it feels like it's it's calmed down. So I'm I'm all for this, but um, I feel like it would have been it would have been a lot cooler if they had this uh, during the uh, you know, post Russia Ukraine deal. If you guys have thoughts on this, drop them in the YouTube comments. According to well followed private group Ag Rural, Brazilian soybean planting was 91% complete as of last Thursday, down from 95% last year during the same week. The consultancy group reduced its forecast last week for the season's crop to 159.1 million tons down from 163.5 million tons. The reduction was due to excessive heat and a lack of moisture. Agrural also reported that farmers in South Central Brazil have planted 95% of this season's first corn crop, slightly below 96% recorded last year. Forecast in Brazil does not look great. The next five days, you're talking little to no rain in, in most of your soybean areas, barring some of the far Northern areas. When you go out and look at the 10 day, yeah, there's a little bit of relief, but uh, still rainfall that's well, well below normal. The soybean market rallied sharply yesterday on this. I, I think it was mostly on this, on, on what looks to be a drier forecast. That being said, the market has been confined to just a really wide range bound trade since, uh, call it August. We, we had our summer peak at 1428 March futures, and now we're at 1358. We're kind of in the middle of the channel. So even though there's been a lot of volatility, it's been very much sideways. Also, I believe Argentina's uh, new president or president-elect is going to speak today about some of his uh, proposed economic policies. And there is some fear that additional inflation in Argentina could um, entice producers to essentially hold on to soybeans or hold on to meal, resulting in less on the export market. That may have had something to do with it. I think this is much more uh, weather though, but the soybean market acted really well yesterday. Uh, we don't have a wheat chart here, but the wheat market really uh, fell off yesterday. I think there's some ideas that maybe the Chinese buying spree is over for the moment, but uh, everything is a little bit higher here early on Tuesday. So if you guys have not already checked out our premium content, you need to do so. Joe, can you tell me about this video you put together yesterday regarding the funds? I had a really popular video I did last week on uh, large money managers or the funds and the corn market and some of the things that we see historically, why this is super important as we move into 2024. And I had a million questions come back. So I figured I would do a full video just to um, kind of do a, a uh, review of all the questions that came in and try to answer this stuff. It's not that complicated, but this is something that you absolutely need to be aware of. If you guys want to see the premium stuff, go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up this morning. This is a $50 per month subscription. Uh, no other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. Remember guys, this is the best way to support what we're doing here on the podcast, on YouTube. 
Uh, we do this part of it for free, basically. YouTube pays us enough to keep the lights on. The podcast pays us nothing. The premium subs uh, keep us in business and allow us to do this every single business day. Uh, morning email goes out at 5 a.m. Central Time. Tons of info in there. Sign up this morning. I'll forward you a copy of that email, which includes the six most recent premium videos. The Treasury Department is anticipated to issue guidelines about SAF subsidies by the end of the week. The guidelines will clarify if SAF made from corn-based ethanol will qualify for subsidies. It's unclear what the Treasury Department will release. However, in late November, Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack said he was confident ethanol would become an SAF feedstock. Given the growing number of electric vehicle sales, the ethanol industry views SAF as one of the remaining avenues to grow the industry. They've kicked the can down the road a couple of times on this. I mean, we've covered this story, the idea that they're going to come out with some sort of guidance, like what, 10 times? It feels I mean, like it. Yeah, it feels like this is something every other week, there's a new uh, update, but they're talking end of the week and, and this could be a market mover potentially. Now we have been told, I have had uh, a number of different premium videos where we had guests on who are experts in this field. And they told us that, you know what, SAF is going to work regardless of which way they go with the guidance. It's just that if they go the way of the environmentalists, uh, the way that they treat emissions, it's going to be a little bit tougher, just going to make it a little bit tougher, may take a little bit longer. So, um, yeah, be be prepared for this. I, I think it could be a market mover potentially, maybe on a short term basis. This is a bigger picture issue. It's not anything that's going to change demand tomorrow, but uh, we hope that this uh, goes our way here in terms of SAF. U.S. soybean shipments were poor last week. USDA reported that 36 million bushels of soybeans were inspected for export during the week ending November, excuse me, December 7th. 7th. Uh, the print was down 16% compared to the previous week and 48% versus the same week last year. Corn shipments declined 40% versus the prior week at 28 million bushels. Wheat shipments were reported at 10 million bushels, an increase of 50% compared to the previous week and 28% versus the same week last year. Here's a seasonal chart of uh, soybean export inspections, your weekly net. Last week's print seasonally was the second worst in the last 10 years. So this is um, primetime soybean shipping season, or, or we're kind of... Uh, exiting primetime soybean shipping season, I guess. And uh, we're running, let's see, below last year's pace, almost 4 million metric tons below last year's pace. Now, USDA uh, is projecting that we're going to see a decline in soybean exports year over year, but this is uh, not good. And I think a lot of this goes back to, you know, big Brazilian crop, um, ideas of another big Brazilian crop, this Panama Canal thing, um, all of that. We did have a flash sale of soybeans yesterday. U.S. exporters sold 5 million bushels of soybeans to unknown destinations for delivery during the current marketing year. As of last Thursday, the U.S. soybean export book was running 16% below the same period last year. Still a lot of questions uh, wh whether or not all of these sales are ultimately shipped. If the Brazil crop is better than expected and it just doesn't end up being the I don't think anybody's saying it's going to be a disaster, but if say, if, say it does end up 160 or better, I'm not going to say it's impossible. Um, you could see cancellations of some of this stuff down the road. So I think that, I think that while we're seeing the sales, which, which are great, I think that some people are suspect of it. One, because Brazil still got a big crop coming the way it sounds, maybe not as big as what we thought a few months ago. And also we've still got logistics issues. The November Consumer Price Index report will be released here this morning, and it is expected to reveal that consumer prices held steady on a monthly basis for a second straight month. On an annual basis, inflation is forecast at 3.1%, slightly lower than the 3.2% recorded in October. The Federal Reserve will likely maintain rates if inflation holds steady or even declines. The Fed will meet today and announce its final interest rate decision of the year tomorrow. Today's CPI report will be released here this morning at 7.30 Central Time. Uh, Bloomberg said they're looking for 3.1. NBC says they're looking for 3 even yeah. in this article. But in any case, I mean, we're looking for a... We're looking for a lower month over month number, I guess. This was a big deal in November. The November CPI report was a big deal. It, it changed the trajectory of uh, ideas regarding the Fed, the stock market, the bond market, all sorts of stuff. So this is going to be the biggest thing, bar none, in the outside market world today. And interest rates are a big deal to you guys. It's, it's one of the biggest issues that we've seen change in agriculture and in farming uh, the last uh, couple of years. These higher interest rates, are uh, they just make everything a lot trickier to deal with because farmers borrow money. It's a capital intensive business. Uh, cattle rebounded yesterday. They sure did. Cattle futures closed higher for the second consecutive trading session on Monday with optimism that maybe we have hit a bottom. 
Live cattle futures close an average of a buck seventy four higher. Feeder cattle futures close an average of two forty higher. Box beef also had a positive day yesterday. Choice ended the day at two ninety forty three. That was up two forty two. Select ended the day at two fifty nine fifty four. That was up a buck sixty four. Outside markets mostly quiet on Tuesday. U.S. dollars off a little bit. Stocks are mixed. Bonds up a little bit. Crude oil is down twenty one cents in the January WTI at seventy one twelve. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you on Wednesday.